Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Find My Past Friday. We're here in the usual place, the usual time, talking about this week's great new records released on Find My Past, and of course, all of your fantastic new discoveries over the course of the week. This is a light-hearted look at what we've been doing. So if you've got any thoughts, comments, queries, questions, get them in, and we'll have a great time having a bit of a discussion. It's uh, wonderful weather here in Edinburgh at the moment. Uh, Ellie is in the comments, who's also enjoying the wonderful Edinburgh weather. And uh, I can see a lot of other people having sunny times. We've got Sunny Island, Ashby de la Zouche, Florida Deb. I hope that's uh, uh, sunny. Uh, Anya's just asked if I've got another delivery today. I was a couple of minutes late just because I had a painter just uh, saying uh, goodbye. So uh, <laughs> we've avoided that. And uh, that also was going to be any point during the day and happened just at the second we we're going live. So I just haven't got very good luck when it comes to these kind of things. And hopefully now I'm just going to uh, make sure that touch wood, nothing else is going to happen. Uh, if you hear any banging in the background, that'll be him taking his paints away. But uh, hello, everyone. Uh, Heather in uh, Edinburgh, uh, and uh, we've got Georgia from Essex, Hillary in Wales. Uh, I see Marge in Northampton. Paula says it's cloudy in Boston. And the one time I managed to get to Boston, it was sunny, but every other time it's been raining and stormy and all kinds of things. So uh, enjoy the uh, the clouds because there are worse weather to have. Drizzly in St. Helens. It feels like we're going through the whole weather. Uh, Winnipeg in is sunny. Uh, it's freezing in Chester La Street. It's rainy in Newbury. Hello to everyone, basically. All of these people in all of the places around the world were here today in one place online talking about family history, which is what's the most exciting thing. So whether, no matter the weather, you've got a friend indoors, and that's here uh, on our Find My Past Fridays. There are a lot of you already here, so let's begin with the big news. Uh, we're going to start with the new records for this week. We've got some new records from Wales. We've got Monmouthshire Parish records. Uh, over 8,300 baptisms from 1921, 5,600 marriages and bans from 1936. We've moved forward due to privacy rules. So if you've got ancestors from Monmouthshire, great chance to go back and look again at those parish records. We've got the largest parish record collection in Wales. If you've got Welsh ancestors, you really need to take a look at those. And then following that up, we've got Glamorganshire. So we've updated them exactly the same way. Uh, baptism from 1921, marriages and bans from 1936. And there's a parish list as well. If you take a look on our Friday uh, email, or if you go to the website and look at what's new, you'll take a look at all of the parishes that we have in that collection. And hopefully that will be able to help you. Uh, and then we've got some newspapers as well. Not so many newspapers this week, but some really good ones. Uh, the Cambria Daily Leader and Cleves Weekly Police Gazette has been added uh, the Cleves Weekly Police Gazette is fantastic because it's got some very early illustrations, really interesting to take a look at. And then the Cambria Daily Leader in Swansea has some new pages added as well. Massive extra span there, 1861 to 1905. And then some even bigger news on top of those great new records you can search and take a look through. Census records covering Britain are free this weekend. If you haven't got a Farmer Pass subscription, you can still go in and you can use those census records. 1841 to 1911, enjoy, explore, have a go on our new census address search. See if you can find who lives in the property you live in or some properties you remember. Even if you're just curious, now is the time. And then maybe you might want to get a subscription and enjoy those other sets of records as well that uh, can help to add some detail to those family stories. But censuses are the photograph, the snapshot in time that you can use to really get an idea of what your family was doing and work backwards 10 years at a time and find out more and more about them. So really, really exciting. And I can see uh, everyone here talking about different things. So Rosemary has asked, is there any chance we'll be getting 1911 census for Scotland soon? And this is a good opportunity to talk about how Pharma Past gets records. And these records come from all kinds of different places, libraries, archives, etc. And the 1911 Scottish Census is held by the National Records of Scotland, their version of the National Archives, which you have down in Kew in London. And that's where it is. And it's, it's up to them who they share it with or where they put it. And uh, sometimes you know they'll make an agreement with a website and sometimes they'll do it themselves. And at the moment, it's only on 
Scotland's people. So that's the only place to go for that. Um, it may change in the future, may not, but that's their, their records, their choice to make. So that's where you'll find that. But we'll, we'll always keep trying to find other records that can tell you the same sort of story or something else to help you with your family history. So don't give up hope. You can still use them elsewhere, but we'll make sure we've got something else as well to keep you excited. And I see a lot of you are talking about the uh, little interview that happened a little bit aware this week. Uh, Ellie has just posted, who's listened to the podcast with Dan Snow, the History Hit podcast. I know it's been shared on the Farmer Past Facebook page and in the Farmer Past group, uh, the Farmer Past forum. Uh, who has heard it? It was quite fun. It was very exciting. I see Ellie's raising her hand, even though you can't see her. And uh, uh, it's it's because uh, Dan Snow was really illustrative, I think, of all of us. He had some very, very famous ancestors, some kings, some nobles, some prime ministers, but he's also got some working class ancestors, people from all over, and they've all got stories. And it was really exciting when you're given a bit of a brief to find something new about someone so well-known, people like David Lloyd George, and when you look at records, genealogical records, you still can, because a lot of historians, a lot of people who write the history books, look at these documents and they miss out on some of these great genealogical records, and so we can still try and weave them together and use our clever genealogical skills to find new things. And so that's what we've been doing. That's what uh, has created Dan Snow's family uh, story that we did a little who do you think you are style experience and uh, he got back to the Tudor era and that was really exciting for him and he seemed very very happy with it but there are some great stories in there and it really gives a little bit of inspiration for anyone else who hasn't started yet start with yourself work backwards and there are so many things you can find there's no telling where it might lead of course this weekend especially because we've got that access to the censuses for anyone who's not a subscriber then that might help you again get that little bit further and get started and um, trust me everyone here will agree once you get started there's no stopping you you will be there at four in the morning in your pajamas other people will be saying is it time for bed yet and say just just one more record i'll keep going and i'll keep going until i find what i'm looking for You'll have a family tree, you'll have stories, you'll become that person that we all are. The person at the dinner table who has 10 stories for every one that everyone else has and everyone really keeps saying, well, I hope they start eating soon because uh, I need to get them quiet because I'm fed up of hearing about uh, great, great granddad down the mine. But it's so exciting and it's so brilliant for us and it's something that we can't really say no to. It's the best feeling you can imagine. I see Beth is excited for our Welsh records. That's fantastic. That's great. Uh, Karen's excited. It's fine. My past Friday. Fridays are great, not only because it's the end of the working week, so everyone can start on some family history, but also because of the time we get to share together. So that's really, really exciting. I see everyone's still saying hello from different places. And uh, let's see what other questions we've got. We've got some uh, other questions too. Uh, Anya is excited for the 1921 census for Scotland this year. We'll see when that comes. It's always exciting to know for a new census. We've got England and Wales coming on far my past. The 1921 census uh, for Scotland will be um, with the National Records of Scotland. We'll see what happens there. But any chance for a new revelation we should grab with both hands. That's really, really exciting. Uh, Enid has asked um, the censuses, are we showing scans of British censuses with our records? Yes, for England and Wales. For Scotland, we've got transcriptions, but those transcriptions are really useful because they're very detailed and you can interrogate them more comprehensively than you can anywhere else. So that means when you're going to try and find an image, and the images are on Scotland's people, if you look for, say, you know, I've got some common names in my Scottish family tree, Crawford, Rennie, things like that, even Brown or Smith, the dreaded names that strike fear into the heart of any genealogist, then you can start to use the transcripts to narrow down on the records that you want to find. And when you do that, then you don't have to spend £200 on looking at every single census image. You know exactly the one you're looking for in the town you're looking for, the age of the person that you're looking for, and it means you only need to get one which is brilliant because when it comes to family history, we've only got so much pocket money and we want to look at so many records. If we know we're getting the right ones, we can let that money stretch a bit further, which is what we want because we want to get as many discoveries as possible. Let's see, we've got some more questions. 
Uh, Andrew has already been rechecking Glamorganshire, found some interesting records. Typical Welsh surnames turn out to be unexpectedly uncommon in the district unconcerned. That's interesting. I'm going to have to learn about that, uh, Andrew. That sounds like a good story. Um, Anya is not a podcast person, can't seem to get into them. I'll, I'm uh, not a, a massive podcast person originally, but I've been getting into them over lockdown. I have I started my own podcast, which has gone fantastically well because I've, I did two episodes and, and then got too busy to do any more. And I promise I will get back to it at some point and maybe we'll talk about that one other day when I've done 100 or something like that and maybe uh, when Ellie has also hosted some, which I keep trying to persuade her to do. But uh, this podcast is uh, really easy to listen to if you want to because we posted it through a YouTube link. So you can go to the Pharma Pass forum or you can go to the Pharma Pass page and you can click on that and just listen to it and uh, have a hear of what's going on. So you don't need any special app. You don't need anything to download. All you need to do is just go there and have a listen and see how we got on in finding Dan Snow's ancestors. It's quite exciting. It's very condensed, half an hour, who do you think you are style audio experience. And the good thing about audio is you can do other things while you're listening. So I've got into doing the washing up with that kind of thing. And uh, I've been very excitedly getting traditional. So I have um, something here, which I've, I've been meaning to eat while I've been doing things, but I can't get these. These are uh, candied citrus peels, which are a very uh, traditional Sicilian delicacy, which I've been learning to make. And I don't think I've done too badly. So I'm, I'm okay with that. But uh, that's been the big thing for me uh, while I've been listening to podcasts. I've been doing that too. So let's take a look at what other things people are saying. Um, I've been seeing uh, Lloyd said, like my world, you relearn history as you should have done the first time. That's very true. We have to relearn history all the time and keep going, keep uh, seeing what's new. The same with family history records as well, because every week there might be something new and we get a chance to go back. Newspapers particularly, because those newspapers have so much detail inside. And when these newspapers uh, are re launch we have new newspapers every week they cover the whole country but stories often they're syndicated don't just look at your local paper look all over keep going back and forth see what you might find see other people saying that they enjoyed it ellen thought it was a really good interview that's really good it's excellent um tracy liked it and uh, joan is saying it was interesting too uh, Dan Snow was a re really uh, nice chap to chat to. So uh, take a look at some of his other podcasts as well. He's got some very interesting ones and some other interesting guests as well. Uh, and maybe at some point we might have a Find My Past podcast, Find My Podcast or something like that. I don't know. Maybe the future. Who knows what might happen? Um, but uh, we've got some other things too here. Um, let's see what else is going on. Um, so I see... Um, uh, Ruth is saying hello from central New Jersey, sunny and breezy. That's good. I have seen some of my family enjoying the New Jersey weather as well. And uh, I see uh, Adrienne looking forward to nailing down the basics of the right. Isabella McKinnon. It's uh, when you've got names like McKinnon, you've got some of those uh, Western Isles names. And yeah, it's really useful to get those uh, censuses and get them laid out and try and look through all the different bits of extra detail you can. Um, Linda has said when we talk about starting family history she does it 24 7 and that's a, something I can really agree with that's a really big thing um, Lindsay's asked a, a big and good question how do you find information on doing your family tree when you have little information how can I be so sure their family if I were to come across records so this is one of those big questions that everyone has when they get started start with yourself uh, hopefully you know when and where you were born you can you can email, you've got these indexes that we can find on Find My Past, and those index references will be the reference if you're born in England and Wales to your birth. You can get a copy of your birth certificate, which have your parents' names on. You might already know your parents' names. That's even better. Uh, you can pop those into the family tree as well. Maybe you'll find the marriage between your parents, and then you'll know where that is. You might even know your grandparents' name. You can start just adding that in. We have these things called hints which help because we'll search the records for you, try and find new things. But ideally, when you start adding things, you get to your grandparents' things. We have things like the 1939 Register in England and Wales, which will give you the dates of birth of people that are no longer with us. So maybe your grandparents' dates of birth. That might really help you find their birth record. And then you might find the mother's maiden name of these people. And then you've got the mother's maiden name, you've got the father's name, and then you try and find a marriage between, say, John Smith and someone with the maiden name Atkinson in that area. And keep going, find that marriage record, find the date, the place, 
try and find a census record maybe look for those names if they're alive at this point in 1911 then you're at the special point for england and wales where you can put those names in put the rough sort of year you think they're born and then see how many results you get back see who's in which place see what family they're with and all it is about is building that family tree out and starting to compare what you have with other documents and make sure it all makes sense it should be logical if it's not logical then something's not quite right and you're clever to have spotted it. There are so many people here, and everyone will tell you, uh, especially those people who've been doing this a long time, that you'll definitely make a mistake in family history. There's no question. I've made some terrible ones. Everyone else here has as well. But the key to being a good genealogist and to improving is spotting the mistakes. And when you do, and when you pick that out, there'll be that moment and you'll you'll feel really possibly quite embarrassed and quite going, oh, what have I done? But that's a really good moment because you've become better and you polish it up, clean it off. Uh, maybe you have to remove some people from the tree or attach new people or anything that might happen, but you've just made your tree more accurate and more right and that's what matters so that's the only thing that matters you should be really happy that you've gone a step further in your family history so don't be ashamed uh, if that happens but ideally you might only get say one or two possible things and everything should be nice and logical and you'll be on that really nice right track so that's what we're trying to do when we get started see uh, other people saying uh, via said when is the 1921 census coming online uh, it should be next year so uh, look out for that for england and wales it's going to find my past it's going to be really exciting uh, i'm sure so i'll see some of you uh, as with 1939 register uh, i traveled around the country and uh, saw many people i know that we're talking about doing something similar for the 1921 census so maybe i'll get to uh, wave and uh, at this point maybe uh, get within a meter of you but uh, we'll see what happens with uh, all the things and if not it may have to be online but we'll see what goes on with that um, and I see some people with some exciting things that they're looking forward to uh, Ita said uh, their Donegal granddad married their Glasgow granny in 1923 can't wait to see if he's on the 1921 census that's a, a big one isn't it when you you're not quite sure and it's going to place people there are so many of those little things that are right on the edge I can't wait for the 1921 census for both sides of Hadrian's Wall. Uh, I think uh, north and south of the border, there's going to be some really interesting things to find. Uh, I think uh, you might not hear uh, from me for a couple of days when it comes live because I'm going to be very, very uh, deep in research, as I think all of us will. Um, and uh, Gina's asked about the free access for the censuses. When does it begin? It's already begun, Gina. So if you go to any census record now, as long as you're registered, which all you have to do, your email address, choose a password, and then you can use those census records. So enjoy and hopefully then if you want to take a subscription you can see those other records as well get started build that family tree and see what you can cover um linda's determined to give podcasts another another go dan snow might be the moment it's a, it's an interesting one and if you like history said so it's great to have history and family history combined so that's a good one i've seen a number of family history podcasts starting to appear as well so they might be of interest too um and then there's always something for podcasts i'm sure um Ellie, at some point, we maybe have to have a chat about our favourite podcast. Well, I've picked out a few. There's a good one about revolutions that I quite like, and there's uh, one about the First World War that I've been listening to. If it's something that you're interested in, I guarantee there's probably a podcast about it. Uh, there's a great Viking story one that I've been listening to to improve my Viking storytelling, which I will not subject you to, but uh, it's, it's an exciting thing to get involved with. Uh, Karen has started some research for a friend at work. His surname is Draghi. I found some census records. He's really curious now. I told him about the free census this weekend. I may have brought him to the dark side. I wouldn't call it dark, Karen. It's only dark because there are so many piles of records by the window. We can't see out. But apart from that, you know, I think it's, it's the good side. It's the wonderful side. It's the side that we should be putting as many people as possible to because then we are spreading the joy of family history because there is a joy and it's great when you have those moments of people finding something magical uh, we're making people cry in a good way of course not in the bad way and uh, the fact that you can help someone else do that then that is a really really exciting thing uh, I see Beth has been visiting grave and churchyards local to them. They need to start matching up some of the graveyard gravestones with documents, especially the military ones. That is interesting. Some of the great Commonwealth war graves ones are of great interest. Um, Victoria said, have I frozen? Uh, I hope not. Uh, please let me know, everyone else, if I'm okay. 
um, because uh, I hope technology is all right. I'm getting the thumbs up, but if, if there is something wrong, uh, then I'm sure Ellie will leap in and save the day. So she's ready to do that. So, yes, uh, she's a superstar in that respect. Fingers crossed. Uh, I think it might be just because I haven't taken a breath since about 4.02. So at some point I may collapse, but until then we're all right. And uh, I've got some uh, great other people saying hello. We haven't even got to our question of the week, and we're 25 minutes in. This is how great we are uh, when it comes to chatting. Um, and uh, let's see what else we've got here. So a lot of people talking about that 1921 census. Matthew saying, welcome to the addiction. That is what it is. Family history is the best addiction that you can hang out with. And this is a sort of Family Historians Anonymous meeting that we have every week. Uh, but uh, there's, there's no cure for any family history addiction. I think we have it forever and uh, we should just enjoy. Um, and so let's take a look at uh, what we've got here. Um, Louis and Gina said, I did freeze a few minutes ago, but um, hopefully, well, that's okay. Um, Anita has said that she should be on a commission. She's brought so many folks to genealogy and they blame her for their obsession. Uh, I think you should uh, definitely be on everyone's Christmas card list then when they, when they find the great stuff. So uh, that will be interesting and that'll be a big thing. Um, and uh, let's see, Anya has talked about those Viking stories, said, I'm looking at family sagas. No, I don't uh, have any. Uh, Viking ancestors to talk about, but I just love the way that those kind of stories are told. It's very interesting how it's like around a fireside. And I think there's a lot that anyone who can tell a story can learn from that kind of style. So I've been picking up some tips. But uh, Sue has said uh, that she was watching QI last night, which is always fun. Uh, apparently, a couple of suffragettes posted themselves to 10 Downing Street. One was a McClelland. Was it a relative? I know that story. It's a really interesting one because they were refused at the door, even though they were delivered. Uh, I remember that because I've seen the original postage note. Um, I've never found a connection between uh, mucks and, and normal. Uh, so there's no muck in, in my family tree. Uh, there's plenty of muck, which has been uh, uh, dredged up by uh, all these different records. We've got plenty of uh, dark horses but uh, we've no mcclellans yet so uh, uh, i've not found a connection so that one's not one of mine but uh, i'm excited to hear that story it's quite uh, great and a connection to the, the common the modern day here i've missed so many of these because i've been working as a census officer for 2021 they finished officially yesterday their payback for using the census records to do their ancestry that's a big thing isn't it it's how these records continue to keep being used every day uh, all the way even to today, and we have the modern census, which has just taken place in England and Wales and is coming in Scotland. So it's uh, one of those uh, big things to enjoy. So uh, let's talk about that question of the week as we, we're halfway through and we have uh, much to talk about. So here we go. So let's take a look at some of your answers. Um, I see here um question of the week i'm going to go through if you have any more answers then do say um pat allen has said so the question of the week if you remember was about um have you felt a connection to the places that your ancestors are from and have you ever visited and pat has found felt a connection they do visit but if they can't get there they try and find a place on google street view and walk where they may have done that's a really really good tip i love google street view and if you remember a while ago uh, jen baldwin and i had a go at doing that virtually so virtual reality and that was quite fun and that's something that you can do nowadays with a bit of technology but you can still do it on your computer without any clever bells and whistles and you can take a look at the street uh, that your ancestors lived on what it looked like now which can be very different indeed so it's really interesting to take a look at that and um, I was only this week talking to Ellie about a street that we were looking at where one of her ancestors is from and uh, it's it's fascinating where we can't really travel around at the moment but we can still see what everything looked like and we can maybe get a bit of a feel for it so that's quite a, a really useful tool uh got one here uh love standing where ancestors stood take pictures of places even if the building is gone that's quite interesting quite good um i went to my great great grandfather's house in a town called dalry in ayrshire and uh, i knocked on the door and said hey do you mind if i uh, take a picture of this place and i was told quite firmly to get lost stay away so be careful when you uh, ask permission for taking photos things like that um, not everyone is as into family history as we are, and uh, it's a, a delicate tightrope. So make sure you're very polite when you ask, and uh, it is someone else's house now. We've had it for our time, and then they've uh, now 
they're the custodian of it. And you may hope they might appreciate the history, but uh, it's up to them. So again, we've got to be very polite and uh, leave no trace as we should do in cemeteries or anywhere else. Uh, Sue has said that when they were young, they lived about 50 miles from Brighton and they would visit frequently. They loved it. They only found out after starting family history that their father's family, both strands, moved there in the 1880s. She's visited most of the places where their ancestors lived in the UK. Three years ago, they did a two-week tour of Scotland, including various places that they lived. And uh, Karen loves looking for the house in Google as well. So it's uh, the same thing with the street view. It's really, really interesting to do. And uh, let's take a look at some more. And uh, I'll see what else we've got from these questions of the week. Fia said their great-grandfather Woods worked for Lever Brothers at Port Sunlight. They went up there a couple of times. They knocked on the door of the house he used to live in. Port Sunlight is a lovely village. It is. It's a really nice place, a beautiful part of the world to have ancestors from. And it's exciting if that house still exists as well. It's great. Bev is in Canada. They found a second cousin in Maryland in the US. Their grandfather inherited the family farm along with all the contents, including photos, financial records and letters. He sent some scans, but she'd love to see more of them and walk through the house and meet the family. That would be interesting. There is a, uh, a farm uh, that's connected to my family in a town called Cumnock in Ayrshire. And uh, I sp spoke to the, the current residents. And uh, this is a story I may have told you before. And, and the first thing they said was, when are you coming to stay? <laughs> and uh, uh, I asked about what, uh, what parts of the farm were still there from when my ancestor was around. And there are some pieces and places. And I did send them some photographs of the original people who lived there and a copy of the census and things. And uh, I think that was uh, much appreciated. But uh, it was very interesting because the family, actually, one of the sons of this family uh, under a uh, demolition firm and they just demolished the church that my own sister had put up so they lived in the house of the person that built the church they demolished which was uh, an awkward moment but uh, i think we all saw the, the funny side of it so i don't think it was too bad but uh, really interesting to see these strange connections let's see what other things we have here um and uh, i see a few people still coming in that's great um Ellen visited her grandfather's village at Dali Sopra in Tuscany. Uh, she could have just sat there all day, surrounded by mountains and feeling at home. It is amazing when you uh, get to travel, especially if it's a long distance. It feels like such an odyssey. It feels like a journey. When you get to the end, uh, it is a beautiful thing. I remember visiting um, my Sicilian hometown and seeing my great-grandmother's grave uh, for the first time. And I was there with all these members of family and things. And on the, on the car ride there, I was in tears already. I was welling up. I, was, I know her story, and it's such an amazing, powerful story that I think you've probably heard to death over the years while I've been doing this. And um, when I got there, I think I was looked at by so many expectant faces thinking that I was going to cry uh, that I couldn't do it. I'd already done my crying in the car on the way, but it was a really emotional, powerful thing. It was, it was brilliant. I was... Um, walked through the cemetery by my grandmother's cousin and uh, we we got to see all these things i saw my great great grandmother's uh, great great grandfather and great great grandmother's mausoleum all these different things and see all the family all there it was an amazing thing really powerful and seeing all these houses and i found out later on that i stayed in um the house that my great grandmother died in and things and all these little connections and i do go on street view as you said and, and take a look at those streets and it does feel uh, like you're back there it's a brilliant thing to do so it's worth it and Anya said, everyone is related to me. Well, fingers crossed, not everyone, because I am running out of Christmas cards. I know that Ellie and I might be related. Someone every week pops up here and is related. I think we're all connected eventually, but I'd love to not have to give you all Christmas cards because I said it's going to be, uh, uh, I think the post office near me is, is going to be very, very angry if I uh, give them in a sack in the way that it's getting like that. So, um and also, who would want to <laughs> to have to deal with me as a relative? So you know, that's one thing as well. And uh, we're seeing here, we've got some other answers to the question of the week. Uh, lots of people coming in. Karen said their granny was born in the lodge house of a house in Ethelfecken. Uh, she contacted the owners online and they kindly sent a couple of pictures. That is a good one. A very good one indeed. Anita's last holiday was a tour of the southwest of England, which included going to Brixham in Devon, where her Sherrod line are from, and from Portsea in Hampshire, where her brown lot are from. 
The next holiday, when safe to do so, is to visit with her mum to Northern Ireland to look for her side. Well, that's an exciting one. I've been looking forward to hopefully getting to Northern Ireland at some point, finding some Irish lines and getting to Prony in Belfast and uh, enjoying some of those records that aren't online yet. And then I've got to try and get to Limerick at some point and see all the places relating to my grandfather as well, which I've never been to there either, so that's going to be exciting. And uh, here we go. Patricia has said that she's not related to me, which is good. So uh, keep going, keep looking, and I'm sure, as everyone else seems to, uh, you'll get there, and we will be cousins eventually. Um, <laughs> so um, Kelly has said that she's always known her dad was Irish, and she's always had a soft spot for it. Since researching his tree, she's discovered almost every ancestor that came from Dunleary right back to the 1800s, um, about the turn of that century. She's been able to locate most of their houses on Google Street View, and she feels like her heart belongs there, even though you've not been yet. And that's what's really exciting, isn't it? It's finally that connection. Janine uh, took her family to Japan, found a family graveyard, and obtained death records from several Buddhist temples. Because we were from America, we were allowed to get them. Locals aren't allowed to see them. It was so cool to be there and see where and how they lived. Nothing can compare to this experience is really really magical isn't it it's powerful it's brilliant to stand in the same place that your ancestors stood and maybe think what they thought for a moment or think well if we're quite similar then i look at this beautiful cliffside and say how how, how at home i feel maybe that's why they were there maybe that's at home they felt too uh, Linda has said her granddaughter started uni in the place where her ancestors lived. She thought, great, I can go and visit, walk in their footsteps. Had to be put on hold for the time being due to a certain pandemic. But, of course, only for the time being. So there's plenty of time yet. Don't give up hope. I'm sure we're getting there eventually. And Kathleen has said greetings from Dublin. We have um, a lot more. We've been talking about Irish connections and people wanted to travel to Ireland and explore and see for themselves. Linda said that when uh, we come to Northern Ireland, she'll stick the kettle on. I don't know if you can fit all of us in the house, but we'll, we'll give it a go. Maybe we'll have to sit outside for a bit. And uh, Janet has uh, had a knock on the door about 30 years ago. Her house had been used by the army in the run up to D-Day. She was told where the map room was. The officer had his room, just a tiny cottage in Dorset. Now, that's an interesting connection to the past, isn't it? That's a fascinating one. That's a really big one. Uh, let's see what we've got there. And uh, Linda said we might yet be related. Uh, Great grandfather was born in Darlaston. So watch out. If you find a Duffield, then uh, we definitely are. But uh, fingers crossed, we'll have to keep looking and see what goes on. If you keep working your family tree on Farm My Past, and I might pop up as a tree to tree hint. Keep seeing how we go. Beth's eldest daughter is attending the university, which their maternal family has been attending on and off for 100 years. That's amazing. Over 100 years. That's a big one. And, um, oh, there you go. Marion said, we welcome you to Limerick when you visit. Grew up there, but no relatives there, only my husband's family. Well, um, I've seen some pictures again on Google Street View, but that's as far as I've got. And I, I think it's Nelson Street that my family lived on, right in the centre. But uh, apart from that, I haven't got too much knowledge yet, so I'm still working on it. And, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to hopefully when everything settles down to going exploring and feeling that wonderful connection because I've not seen things from that side of the family yet. So it'd be really interesting. And Ellie said, find my past on tour. Wouldn't that be really exciting? We could get a camera, um, have our vaccines and uh, get a, a, a cheap flight, a Ryanair or something like that to every part that all of our ancestors are from. And we could uh, record all of these uh, how does it feel moments when we're stood where our ancestors were and things. So that could be really exciting. So uh, maybe we'll have to have a dig around for that and see what happens. And uh, Anya said, if we all just stayed in Dundee, well, um, we, we all are, uh, if we have been in Dundee, but of course we have to move around and see the world because it's too exciting not to, and especially when our ancestors come from everywhere as well, um, it would be such a waste to, to stay. Uh, that silvery, beautiful Tay is nice enough to see, but every day you want to see new rivers, perhaps, and uh, new shores, because that's where we find new lands, and that's what's exciting. So uh, Cindy has said years ago in the early 2000s, they had some people knock on their door in their first house in London, and it was a son and elderly mother who were visiting from New Zealand. She'd been a child in the 1930s, as many people were, and they were the first owners of the house. My husband showed them round, and she showed him where the Anderson shelter had been, and lots of stories. Fortunately, I wasn't in at the time, but I grilled my husband and wrote it all down. That's exciting. Maybe take a look at the 1939 register and see if you can find their names and see when you're looking by address. That'll be really interesting. And uh, Patricia has said, I have Annie Duffield, 1868 in Sedgley. Ah, so again, every Friday we find a new cousin. Uh, this is a strange record, and I don't know when it's going to be broken. And um, it's 
always fun. Um, <laughs> welcome, cousin. Hooray for the Find My Past Miko's Cousin Roadshow is becoming. Uh, hi, Patricia. Uh, great stuff. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you can't make this up, can you? It just keeps going and going. I don't really understand it myself, but uh, there we go. I would offer you some Sicilian uh, candied citrus peels if you were here, but uh, next time. Marion has said, find my past on tour in Ireland. I think we could definitely have a go at that, and that would be really exciting. Um, I think we could film some great videos or maybe even doing some live broadcasts from there or something. Let's dig into that and keep our fingers crossed. Rosa very often has been somewhere and felt like they've been there before. Lovely to look at old maps and see how things used to be. There used to be an MP traffic warden in London based at WC1. I want to take more notice of their surroundings. Uh, some of their beats were where their ancestors lived. They were watching clockmakers in Bunhill Row and Whitecross Street, which wasn't too far away. It is interesting when um, you can go places and you don't realize this connection till later. And I wonder, is there something in that? And that's one of those interesting things that uh, you know we would love to dig more into and find some science behind. And I'm sure there's some university and lots of people that could write a PhD study on how that connection happens and works, but it's, uh, it's an interesting one. Uh, Rosie um, has uh, their cousin's wife went to a village in Kerry and plunked herself on people of the same surname. No relation though, but they were understandably a bit confused and they did give her a cup of tea, but no biscuits. You only get the biscuits if you're related, Rosie. That's the thing. They keep them for special occasions. So uh, that's one thing maybe. Uh, Alison's aunt lives in Whitney where their fourth great grandparents lived. That's fantastic. How close is that to the actual buildings and the streets? That'll be interesting. And uh, Karen has said, you know, I told you you would find someone. And Linda has said, all these cousin links are hilarious. Um, Beth has said, I'd be disappointed if someone wasn't related to me when I'm doing Friday Lives. Well, I think I do one a month. And so I think at this rate, uh, I'm going to be related to all of you by about 2024. I'm not quite sure. So we'll keep going and see what happens. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Joan visited the town Campobello di Mazzara, um, my husband's great grand family, and to see many streets with his family name. Very moving. That's a, a nice thing. I like see everyone with Italian connections. Of course, uh, I'm a little bit biased, but I think uh, everyone with Italian connections should celebrate them to the hills, uh, whether that's through your culture or the things that you enjoy doing, and just to show that you've got some great things to be thankful for. And uh, let's see what else. Linda said we need to build a tree. And uh, maybe there is a Farmer Pass community tree to be built somewhere with us all in there. And um, uh, we've got a question from Ellie. Uh, if we were to do some extra things on social media for you all, what would you like to see? If we did a special week, giving things away, something like that. So that's a good one. If anyone's got some answers, anything you want to see, what would you like giving away for free? And that's one of those difficult questions. Um, it could be, you know, um, some time looking at your family tree with me. Uh, let's say, you know, maybe an hour. Second prize is two hours. Third prize is three hours. So be careful. And there are all kinds of other things we could do. Um, and uh, there's lots and lots of things that you might want to see there. So uh, put those in the comments and hopefully she'll have some uh, great things to arrange. Uh, Linda has said, does a five times Italian great great grandfather count? Yes, it does. It's important. Every, every time you've got any kind of connection to Italy, uh, then uh, you should always be really proud of that. So especially, it said, no matter who your ancestors are and how far back, if you're proud of them, you should celebrate them. You should do anything. It's not a secret club that no one else is allowed in. And people that say that, they're just, you know, they're, they're very silly. I think it's really important just to say, you know, if you have a, a 10 times great grandfather who's Welsh or something like that, and you feel really proud and you feel connected to Wales, then enjoy it and get that flag with the dragon and stick it up high and uh, frame the maps of the areas you've come from and all kinds of things, photographs. Enjoy every moment because that's what it is. It's about that, that connection, that discovery and belonging. That's what family history is. So don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Those people are not people you want to hang around with anyway. Enjoy all of it. So, you know, I welcome any uh, anyone with any Italian roots because I will say welcome to the family, la familia. And, uh, you know, uh, il mio paesano or paesani, I would be. Um, you see, this is the problem. When it's uh, a Friday, my Italian goes down the drain. Uh, but uh, 
Let's have a look. Um, Anne has said, where can you find my family tree? Yeah, I look like a cousin. <laughs> Need to track down Kennedy ancestors from Limerick. Well, my family tree is on Find My Past. So if you start making a tree and uh, see if you get some hints, then you might it might be me that you're contacting. So do that. Um, and uh, you see here, Ivy has said, free access to newspapers, please. But you see, we do have these free events now and then, like the censuses. But, um, of course, if you get a subscription, you can see them at any time, all the time. So that's why that's so exciting. A free weekend or something like that is, is a weekend and it's exciting, gives you a taste, but you don't want to wait for a, a year or two years or you know who knows when there might be the next thing or anything. It's more exciting when you can just get to it and see things. And I don't think I could wait that long. So definitely uh, we should uh, do, uh, you know, well, if you get the urge, you should just take a look. And if you find a match, then you definitely explore getting a subscription. Linda now has an Italian daughter-in-law. Excellent. Uh, that's a great one, Eviva. And uh, uh, we've got, uh, yeah, uh, Victoria has said, uh, Viva Italia. That's great. And Bocca al Lupo. And um, then uh, Karen's sister married into an Italian family, Gugliotta. And uh, it seems now this, we're, we're taking another route and we're having, a, um, we're, we're going to maybe have another Italian session at some point, I think. Um, Cindy has said, Mika be warned. She's finding people marrying into her Irvin ancestors' family who are from Dalry in Ayrshire. Well, uh, maybe another cousin coming. That's one of those things to see. Uh, Brian's grandfather's family came from South Austria, practically on the Italian border. Is it close enough? There are plenty of borders that are around through history that are uh, very fluid and very flexible. And our ancestors didn't really care about those lines nearly as much as uh, the governments that run these things do. So you'll find people on both sides of borders that consider themselves one way or another. So however they identified, that's how you should look at them. Um, there are plenty of Italians on the Austrian side of the border and there are plenty of people in Italy that speak German and consider themselves Austrian on the other side of the border in Italy. So uh, I think it's Bolzano is one of the places, if I remember rightly, um, right on that border. And so however your answer is identified, that's the thing to listen to. So if you can say that they're Italian, and uh, then uh, you can enjoy that and embrace it. So definitely enjoy that. And uh, uh, Tina also has Italian roots. Uh, her grandmother was a Fidzi, and she's from Jamaica. So that's quite interesting and exciting. I think definitely we might have to do something about Italian uh, records again at some point. Uh, Paula's sister's husband is from Italy. And uh, yes, there's lots and lots going on. Uh, Linda has said she would like to explore the newspapers um uh, for some wacky stories one week that would be good i'm sure we could do that i'm sure we can have a bit of a a fun session of the strangest things we found in newspapers that would be a big one that would uh, definitely and uh, i see ruth is saying uh, all three son-in-laws are italian bringing in new ethnicity every generation that's quite exciting and Anya's uh, better half is half Italian. The Italian session last year helped me out loads. And any of you here talking about looking at your Italian uh, ancestors and then looking for Italian records, that session is still on our uh, Facebook page. You can look through our video collection. You can also find it on our YouTube channel. So you don't have to wait until we do another session. You can go straight in and you can take some of those uh, tips and you can start looking for records today, which is really exciting. So that would be quite a, a good one to look at if you do that. All of the sessions that we've held, whether it's on black country history or um, you know, finding ancestors in newspapers, anything you can think of, all of these wonderful presenters, they're all in that library of content that you can find now uh, that we've created over lockdown that will stand there forever. And so that's really exciting to go to. Um, and uh, we see uh, Patricia said, are there going to be any Cumberland records like Whitehaven? We've got quite a few already, but there are definitely some more in the pipeline. So keep your eyes peeled and see what might be coming soon. Always keep your um, itself subscribed to the newsletter. It comes out every week. You'll be the first to know about the new records. And don't forget to check on the website every Friday. We release only website that releases new records every Friday. Really, really big and important. Uh, Kira says that she lives in Italy. She's from New Zealand. Uh, my husband's family is from the south and migrated to Brazil. Both difficult countries to research. They are. Um, although Italy is quite, you can get there. There are a few tricks and tips. It's not as hard as it seems. So definitely check out that video that we just mentioned that's in our library about tracing Italian ancestors. It might give you a leg up. It might really help. So um, definitely uh, take a look at that. 
Bev said it'd be great to see us help one of you with your research problems one session. Oh, we could do that. It could be fun. I know we have our monthly question and answers, but maybe we might go a bit deeper and maybe do a bigger question and see what we can find. That could be interesting. Another quiz will be fun as well. We could do that. I think that could be fun as well. As long as we spread them out, that could be good. And um, then Kelly has also said this is a good point for anyone who needs any help. I see some people saying they might need a bit of help. You could post a question in the Pharma Pass forum, and there's lots of people who can help. And that's a really interesting one, um, a really important point to make, because that Pharma Pass forum is full of researchers who are only too happy to take a look at different things. They're really excited, and they really do enjoy a good problem to solve. So I've taken advantage of that myself sometimes. It's really good to have a second pair of eyes on things, and uh, sometimes we can't see the woods for the family trees. It's a really big thing, and so I definitely make use of that. And I do like seeing everyone in a while popping in and seeing all the questions and answers and everyone helping each other. It is great. So uh, do like that. Um, Mary Ann has said, whereabouts would you find a Welsh sailor who was at sea in the census? The census takes place on one day, and that one day is the moment that the census is taken. If they're at sea, I'm afraid they may not be in the census. If they're in port, they may be in later censuses. Uh, and if they're in riverways and waterways and things like that, they will be in censuses. But if they're at sea, I'm afraid you may have missed out because it's just at that moment in time. So um, that's why you might not be able to find the person you're looking for. But take a look at our great Merchant Navy records, and that might give you some information too. And it will give you the dates. Hopefully, if you see that Merchant Navy record, it will give you the dates that they've gone to port and they've gone to sea. And then you can work out if they are actually away or if they're at home somewhere and they just haven't been found yet. Let's see what else we've got in our last 10 minutes. It's been so exciting talking to you all. It is fantastic. It is great to see all these things going on. And uh, let's see, Sue has mentioned for this, uh, a friend found a farm where some relatives lived in Devon. Uh, she showed me the farm when I visited. The lady who owned the house was gardening and overheard our conversation and invited me in to look around. Very, very special. Well, it does sound very special. Uh, and we've got this one here. Um, Over the last few years, I've been holidaying in a Suffolk seaside village. And just last week, I discovered a whole bunch of distant cousins who lived there over the years. Wow, I wonder if you felt that connection. Oh, you'd have to let me know. That's exciting. That's really good. And uh, see, um, I see. Let's see what else we've got here. Ingrid has said her dad's father's family were from Nayland in Suffolk. Never heard of it until her dad gave her a suitcase of family history, photos, documents, and dozens of photos. My sister and I went to Nayland for the day and had our sandwiches in the high street where my great grandparents lived. Not sure which house was theirs. So their address was High Street. Why didn't the Victorians use postcodes? That is one of those things that I can lament and agree. Sometimes also the numbers change, which is all very confusing because you might think that your ancestors live at number 26 and number 26 used to be number 14. So then you can find yourself standing in front of someone uh, that's not your house. So you have to work it out and just make sure that everything's the same. So that takes a little bit of uh, a bit of logic and deduction and going through these different uh, censuses year by year to see where you get to. Uh, let's see what else we've got here as we go through and uh, more comments and questions um, and a great link here um, a lots of people saying about different people um, so Jane Richards my grandfather not on the census as at sea managed to find all his ships and dates through to 1908 that's really really useful that's good really really um, good to use those records and find out where people are at different points so you know whether you might find them in records and that you can lay to one side and just compare and contrast Ruth visited Talentire in Cumberland where her great grandmother was born found the house where a non-conformist ancestor settled isn't that great I remember going on a, a business trip with my boss and uh, we drove from London all the way to Cornwall to make a meeting in Cornwall and as we were driving, uh, suddenly I just said, OK, stop the car. And uh, we got out and uh, the churchyard where my great, great, great grandparents were buried was next to the road. And we got out and there is a photograph, which I think I've shared here before, of me stood next to uh, the grave of my great, great, great grandparents, which he very graciously took after he was quite confused that I'd stopped the car and uh, and we had to take a look around. But uh, one thing that happened is that he he kicked the the grass just around the, the bottom of the thing and revealed this poem, which was really interesting. I've never seen this poem. And um, it's one way to connect with your ancestors, to know the you know the, the Bible verses they choose for the 
stones that they have or the poems that they use it gives you a bit of an idea of their personality and the things they found important so that was a really moving moment for for me as well and uh, here we've got some more uh, different comments here um matthew uh, again another one visited the home of one 18th century ancestor many years ago with some cousins the couple living there invited us in and were fascinated by what we told them about the house and the family it is a big thing isn't it um here we go. So Craig has asked a good question. When you hit a brick wall after 1911, the person dies for the 1939 register. What can you do to find them? Well, that's quite useful because you've already got a narrow span. You've narrowed things down a bit, so you've got less places to look than maybe someone else. Um, you would start, if you know they're definitely 1911, you're looking from 1912 to 1939 and start with the death records, see how many matches you get with that name, see how many matches you get in that sort of place. Uh, keep an eye on district boundaries to know where you should be looking and see perhaps if there's one that maybe pops out with the age of uh, death you might know which ones make sense there may be two or three that are plausible maybe you might have to order more than one certificate that's possible because there might be too many if there are none at all then start to broaden your search start to use things like we mention these all the time but you should be always using these wild cards so wild cards when you start typing things in uh, you can use a question mark in place of any letter. So let's say my name, um, Cleland. If you take the A away at the end and I put a question mark, so it's a C L E double L question mark N D, then that will get me Cleland, but also get me Clelond, which for one generation my family decided their name was. So I've found a lot of extra records by being able to do that because it means that there's a letter there, but the letter might change. If you're not sure at all. So let's say my name, Clallan, with two L's. For a lot of history, my ancestors use one L. So I can put an asterisk in between in those L's. So I can do one L, an asterisk. And that asterisk means that there might be a letter there. I don't know what it is. There might be one, but there might not. So that way also you can do things. So if you're looking at, say, people's names in the darker parts of history, as we go all the way back into the recess of time, perhaps they have an E or something like that that disappears from the end. You can put that on the end and you'll get all, so let's say Finley. Uh, you'll get Finley, Finley with an E, but you'll also get things like Finlayson and that sort of thing because of the way that that works. So if you've got names, names with a muck maybe at the start, you can put that star in front and I'll get Cleland, I'll get McClelland as well because I've put the asterisk in the front. So use that as well and you might find your ancestors are there, but they're not transcribed, right? So there's that too. Also look at burial records. And at this point as well, there are council burial records as well, not just the church ones. So look in both places and make sure you've looked at both too. And uh, it's a really, really big point to make sure because even as we get to the 20th century, um, council burials become more and more common and a lot of those aren't online. So that might be a reason. You might be looking in churchyards and so many of these churchyards are either full or um, they're not taking as many burials as, as they were uh, or people have just chosen to be buried in a different place. So make sure you've had an exhaustive search. And we have a lot of those, but of course, there are still many in council offices and places like that. So take a look online and see what you can find. And here we go. So Andrew said, they're continue comparing the enumerator's walks from 1871 and 1881. I found that the place where their great, great, great grandfather died in 1875 had been redeveloped by 1881. Obviously a slum even then. Well, it might not have been a slum. It might just have been ready for some redevelopment. Someone new might have come along and needed something else. So don't uh, don't give up hope too much. I mean, it could be a, quite a nice place in truth. Uh, and enumerator's walks are quite interesting. If you want to go out of the house, you want to do some walking, maybe walking the route of an enumerator's walk might give you a better appreciation for the census around the area you live and things. And you can find that on the 1911 census, for example. If you take a look at the associated documents, you can see a description of the enumerator's walk. And that's quite exciting. It might be an interesting way if you're maybe trying to get some walking in over the next month, anything like that, then you could maybe do an enumerator's walk around the local area and get a feel for that. And that would be something interesting. Maybe you might have to see, do a find my past challenge or something in the forum and see what people found when they'd followed that walk. And uh, see, Sue has said their granddad, great granddad, and great great granddad were all bricklayers. My great and great 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 granddad were born in Doncaster. It's funny how these things connect and keep going, isn't it? It's, it's a big thing. It's very, very exciting. So I think we're, we're getting close. It's at three minutes to the, the top of the hour. So I'm going to run through and see what else we've got, see if there's anything I've missed or anything. If you've still got some time to have a chat, so if there's anything else you can think of, then do, do bring it in. 
but uh, I always say it's, it's a lovely time to um, to to talk to you every Friday, and every time it's my turn, I have a great time. And uh, all of the hosts here, I think they're all lovely, and uh, it's always great to watch them as well. So I'm always usually hanging around and watching them whenever it's their turn as well. So I love spending time with you in that way. It's really exciting, and uh, I'm glad that you've taken the time to join us. But of course, as the weekend comes in. Don't forget, if you're subscribed to Farmer Past, go and enjoy all the wonderful Farmer Past records. Enjoy the new ones. Enjoy the old ones. Enjoy them. Well, they're all old ones, but enjoy the records. But if you aren't, now is a great time to try those census records and see what you can discover. See who lived in your house with that new census address search. Uh, see what your family was doing. Build a little family tree. Get back to your grandparents, great-grandparents. Hopefully that gets you back to a census year that you can find and then start searching and seeing what you can discover. And I would love to hear on that Find My Past forum what you found over the weekend. It's really great to come back to these things and see what else comes out. It's really great. And uh, see, um, Anya's waiting for a joke. I'd say, <laughs> it's dangerous. Uh, I, I'm, I'm too scared. I'm a bit worried about that. Um, there are many different jokes I could throw in, but I like to keep my job. So when it's uh, off the cuff, it's a little uh, safer. Uh, but uh, yes, I've got to be careful. Um, and uh, I see people saying these different places they've visited, and it's great. Uh, Claire feels more connected to their dad's Irish heritage and their mum's English heritage. They got to go to their dad's hometown in 2012. They stayed in the house he grew up in. He moved to Australia at age 14 with his parents and grandparents. In the same trip, they happened to be in some areas in England where ancestors live without knowing at the same time. That's great. That's really big. Um, Laurie has said it's the best time of the week with us. That's fantastic. We enjoy it too. We always look forward to it. It's really, really helpful. And uh, it's uh, one of those, that's a terrible end. We can't end it on this comment, I'm afraid. We'll keep going till we get another one. The house that Patricia's grandfather was born in is no longer there because it's now a nuclear waste dump. It's in Drig. Well, that is one of those things that maybe you don't not be too happy to find, but it's important to know because then uh, we can tick that off on our research. And uh, let's see. So here we go. So my great grandmother was a dressmaker at Neville's on Edgware Road in London. Apparently, she used to model dresses for royalty as she didn't sweat. Where could I find info about Neville's? Well, I would say um, perhaps look on Find My Past because there are lots of trade directories, lots of things that might tell you a bit more information. Take a look at those censuses as well and tell us what you find. It could be really exciting. That could be very interesting. Uh, Enid said, um, so uh, Ellie is saying, take care. It's good. Enid said her clallens are in Edinburgh in the 17th and 18th century. Um, I've not connected back to that. Possibly mine started there, but I haven't got there yet. So maybe I found another cousin with a bit more research. So maybe I'll see you soon, Enid, and we maybe find a connection. Uh, seeing lots of people saying thank you. And I so say we're at five o'clock. So thank you, everyone, for coming. And thank you, Ellie, in the comments. Um, I see people already have found new things. I see Sue's just found a new line. I see other people as well making discoveries. Keep making discoveries over the weekend. Keep enjoying yourselves. Keep doing what makes you happy. And of course, I hope that's family history. And I'm really looking forward to talking to you again soon. Uh, you'll see many more presentations by all of the wonderful staff here at Find My Past. Enjoy that uh podcast with myself and dan snow uh talking about the great records that can uncover some family history enjoy those census records that are free this weekend and enjoy yourselves so have a great time and i hope to see you very very soon thanks very much i'll see you later <laughs>